often I'm from the left and the right, I'm the focus of some critique. I'm part of systems that people think are rotten. And so my instinct, my first instinct is to be defensive. Uh, and which say, hey, I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm not, one, I'm not the problem here. You should know this. Right. But I've since learned that when somebody's critiquing me, my job is to stand in their standpoint. It's to ask them three or four or five times in different ways, tell me more about what you think. Tell me more. What am I missing here? What am I missing here? And first, you learn a lot. If you ask the same question four or five times, the fifth answer is very much better and very different than the first answer. Right. Uh, and then the other thing you're doing is you're showing respect. And so there's a great book I recommend called Crucial Conversations by a whole bunch of authors led by a guy named Joseph Grenny. And they say that in any conversation, respect is like air. When it's present, uh, nobody notices. But when it's absent, it's all anybody can think about. Right. And so they say every conversation has the thing we're nominally talking about, but the real conversation is the underflow of emotion that's going between us. Oh, that's so so with, with everything I say, I'm either making you feel more safe or less safe, more respected or less respected. Right. So pay attention to that under conversation. Right. Uh, and so if I can show that level of respect and curiosity, we may not agree, but, but we'll, we'll respect each other and it'll, it'll, we'll have a good relationship. A couple other things which I, I got from conversation experts, one is to find the gem statement. Right. So if you and I are disagreeing about, I don't know, whatever, Karl Marx, um, and we may disagree about that, but we both love America and want what's best for America. If we keep that gem statement in the center, uh, then we preserve our relationship amid a disagreement. Yeah. And then the final one is uh, find the disagreement under the disagreement. Right. And this is a Talmudic rule. Like when two scholars are debating, they have more, f you can debate, that's fine. But it's more fun to say, why are we disagreeing? Like what, what's the deep, yeah. yeah. And so that's, then we're jo on a joint exploration. Now as for what to do with self-absorbed assholes. <laughs> How do you have a conversation? I must say, that is a problem. Which, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I mean, a, a, any relationship has got to be reciprocal. Yeah. And so I guess I've sometimes tried, lead with a little curiosity, ask a question, maybe you'll lead with curiosity back. Lead with um, maybe a slight vulnerability, see if you have answer back. Yeah. But at some point, some people are just like, boom. Yeah. Uh, and I have, well, I live in Washington, so the most emotionally avoidant city on the face of the earth. Uh, and I, I tell this story in the book. I was on the phone with a friend of mine. He's a friend, sort of. Um, and he was serving the Obama White House. And we're talking, and I'm on my cell, and the call drops. And I think, okay, he'll notice the call drops. He'll call me back. So I wait two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, eight minutes. And I finally call his office, and... I talked to his assistant, she says, oh, he can't talk, he's on the phone. And so I say, he's on the phone with me. He does not understand that our call dropped <laughs> 10 minutes ago. And so when you got a bloviator like that, uh, I, I- It's hard. My only rule is we will not be enjoying each other's company again.